Brighton Talk Sex, the sex education we never had at school. You're listening to Brighton Talk Sex. Welcome to Brighton Talk Sex. And today I'm with beautiful Hannah Angel and we are talking about sex after childbirth. Hello, Hannah. Hello, Michelle. So can you begin by um, telling us a little about motherhood for you? Um, like how old your child is, your first time mum? Um, so yeah, uh, I'm a first time mum and mm-hmm. my boy is 20 months old now, just about. Um, and motherhood is everything. That's always my answer when people ask me how it's going. It's everything. It's been or is my biggest blessing and my biggest challenge. Mm-hmm. It's literally turned my life upside down and inside out a few times <laughs> over. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's intense. It's full on. It's beautiful and amazing. Um, and yeah, I was looking at him the other day and even though it can be really uh, difficult at times, I would always choose him. You know, if, I, if I had the option, I would always choose him. Mm. So, yeah. What was your biggest surprise after he was born? I mean, as in how it it changed your life? (sighs) Um, Time was no longer mine. (laughs) (laughs) That's a big one. Um, And, yeah, I really felt like that transition had from from girlhood into womanhood Mm -hmm. even though I was a woman an adult when I had him it I just felt that kind of that that shift into that um I was changed I was different and I would never be the girl I was before I was this mother now Mm. um and even sort of right after giving birth my voice was different Mm. um I was physically different I mean, obviously all the the body changes, but I had a gap in my teeth, um, which was just like phenomenal that, you know, the link between the pelvis and um, and the jaw. Um, and yeah, I was changed. I was changed in so many ways. Hmm. So on a practical level, how did things feel different? At the time thing. Um <laughs> <laughs> and time seems to be very precious isn't it yeah yeah and I hadn't realized how much freedom I had before and mm. I am still you know I'm very much a free woman now but I don't have the same amount of freedom as I had before you know I can't I don't pop anywhere anymore you know mm. just coming here today I didn't just pop to yours it was a whole mm. process of getting stuff ready, getting him ready, getting da 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 mm. um, I never pop to the shops and it's like, um, yeah, practically things take a lot longer. <laughs> mm. um, I suppose that shows up as responsibility. Yeah. Doesn't it? All yeah. of a sudden we're responsible for another life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, it's not, it's not just about me anymore. And even when I've been in relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and obviously there's, when you're in a relationship with someone, there's the two of you and you have to think about the two of you and the, the compromises that come with that. But yeah, suddenly you're, you've got this tiny being who's completely reliant on you to make their world happen. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty huge. Mm-hmm. And at all the, uh, trainings and workshops and, all the different things I've been through and done in my life like it kind of feels like nothing in comparison to this (laughs) there is no book (laughs) with children definitely not no um yeah and there's the old you know very much cliche things that I would hear in the in in the past and it's like seeing the truth in that now you know he is my biggest spiritual teacher Mm. and this is one of my biggest learnings and um yeah it's amazing Mm. is that beautiful thing that um we believe we're teaching children when actually <laughs> they're teaching us a whole mm. a whole lot yeah absolutely yeah. yeah so sex after childbirth mm-hmm. um 
I mean, obviously there's that time period of six weeks where women can't and don't want to <laughs> have sex. Um, I was just wondering how how childbirth affected your, not just your sexual relationship, but your relationship at the very beginning. My actual relationship, or my relationship with myself. Well, we could start with the relationship with yourself. <clears throat> Um, so I think if I sort of backtrack a little bit the with the pregnancy, mm. um, that in itself was, um, I think it's a huge thing for any woman to go through with the hormonal changes and the body changes and, um, all the emotions that come with that. Um, and I kind of came from a background of um, eating disorders and body dysmorphia and a lot of challenge there. And although I was in a much better place with all of that, to become pregnant and to go through all of that, that was mm. something in itself. So my body didn't feel like my own um, mm. at times. So I was embracing my bump, but it was it kind of felt quite alien sometimes at the same time. Um, and then, um, did it mean you had to care for yourself in a different way coming from a place of history of, you know, eating disorders? Yeah, no, absolutely. And it was right. It's like, I'm not just, um, this is not just about me. I've got a little mm. being growing in my belly and I need to nourish this little being. Mm. Um, so it, um, was definitely a different kind of nourishment and a different kind of care. Mm. Um, and sort of started certain things that I may not have done had I not been pregnant, um, taking collagen, for instance, and vegetarian for many years. And mm. um, I now eat fish, um, mm. those kind of things. So it, it did um, enable me to kind of step up in that sense. Um, and then the, the labour itself was very long, very arduous and yeah, quite traumatic to be honest. Mm -hmm. So sort of coming out of that and into then having a newborn. Um, I can't remember your original question now. But How childbirth changed your relationship, relationship with sex and body with yourself? Yeah. So I kind of, I, even like throughout the whole pregnancy, I still, my sexuality changed. Obviously, as I got heavier and bigger and tighter. Mm. Um, but, um, I've always been a very sexual being. Mm. So I was still feeling that sexuality throughout my pregnancy. Um, and even sort of post birth, it was sort of the, the changes that my body had been through, the trauma that my body had been through. Um, I've also got a history of traumas and that kind of, uh, rem reminded my body of some of those traumas. Mm. So it was a, a relearning to, to be with that and to support myself with that, mm. to not get re-traumatized. Um, and to remember that, uh, I was a sexy, healthy, sexual being still. And I think because of sort of my background and the work that I do, it's just something that's very present with me. Like my sexual energy is, mm. is, is there and very important to me. Mm. Um, so although, yeah, although my body was very different and it's taken, I mean, my body is still very different to how it was. Um, it was a new relationship with myself, a stronger mm. relationship with myself. Mm. But it was a process to get there. Um, I remember in the talk actually I was talking about actually looking at my yoni again. Mm. And it took me a while to be able to do that. Um, mm. I'd been cut during the labour. Mm. And it, I was in pain and I needed to look at the wound to make sure it was healing. And, but it took me a while to be able to, to do that and... It was interesting coming from a a background of 
sexuality and this is what I teach and this is what I do to suddenly I'm finding it difficult to look at my own yoni. Yeah. So that process of, of, of going through all that, which was something I'd gone through years previous, but for very different reasons. So, hmm. but it was all very empowering to take those steps and to be, to be kind to myself hmm. and to remember the huge things that, um, I'd been through. It's honouring, isn't it? Yeah. Now, our yonis have gone through it as much as us, us as a being. It's that honouring of that magnificence of giving birth to a child. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think we're really taught that as women, are we? No. No, not at all. No. No, there's a lot about motherhood and childbirth and all of it that we're not taught. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So you felt for yourself that your sexuality and your and your body care deepened through your pregnancy yeah I, I didn't realize it at the time my pregnancy was very challenging and very difficult but sort of looking back it was mm. a process I was going through a transitional process that I was going through and I came out of it the other end yeah stronger more embodied more grounded mm-hmm. and more in my my sexual power actually in some ways mm. um And I know that um, I feel that mother energy coming into into life and and into the way I relate as well. It's a different a different kind of energy that comes in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So your after childbirth, how was your relationship with your body and your own sexuality? Did you find that the sexual energy? Um, was softer, calmer for a while while were you yeah. healed, while your body healed? I mean, we have hormonal changes, all kinds of things after childbirth. Yeah, there's a lot that comes into it. I mean, I, d- I know that me and my partner started having sex sooner, much sooner than six weeks. Right. I, I couldn't tell you how long, but maybe a couple of weeks after or something. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> quick to get back at it <laughs> blimey um, <laughs> um, but we had to we had to slow it down as well mm. um, and that in itself as well was a real it's almost like a tantric experience actually on, on that kind of a, you know the, the slowing down and the taking things really gently and really slowing uh, slowly um, from a physical point of view but it was also a very spiritual experience as well. And I remember the first time actually that we made love was just phenomenal. Like the sensations that I experienced, mm. it was, it was something, I mean, I've had amazing sex and I've had amazing experiences, but this was something different. Like mm. the, yeah, when I think it was as he entered me or when he was inside of me or something, I just, it was like, I felt, felt things I'd never felt before and that was obviously because things within me physically were so different Mm. Um, and I've not felt that since because those things have now gone back to how they should be and things but it was yeah it was a real spiritual experience well you you know it was a new meeting of each other because you were now a different woman Mm. And yeah. we were parents together. And parents well. together, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, so sex in a relationship after childbirth, how, how has that been? Well, you exp- you've explained your first time. Yeah. But, you know, there are challenges that come into how we can have sex <laughs> in a relationship after, after childbirth. Yeah, no, absolutely. And for each woman... It's so different as well, and mm. you know, I wouldn't want anyone listening to this thinking, "Shit, it's been eight weeks and we've not had sex yet. There's something wrong yeah. with me." That was my experience, and it's going to be different for every woman. Mm. Um, and it's definitely about listening to your body and honouring what's right for you. Mm. And yeah, we have the physical aspects, and we also have a newborn baby. Or two or three. The practicalities. Yeah. Um, there's the exhaustion that comes into it. You know, there's the time factor. It's, um, yeah, 
uh, it's finding that time to it's carving out that time you know there's not so much of spontane spontaneity Spont- spontaneity <laughs> spontaneity <laughs> a quickie in the kitchen yeah right. it's not available it's like well no no it's quickies asleep let's all right <laughs> um or you know let's really uh, make an effort to make that time and I think you know, that's mm. important in any relationship and then when you've got kids factored in as well um so did yeah. you find the, sorry the quality so you said you know quick is asleep so I mean does the quality change it doesn't have to you know it can be it can also bring in the uh the the excitement the um mm. the spontaneity and you know some <laughs> And it, it will vary from time to time. I mean, sometimes the, the quality isn't what it might be another time, you know. Mm. And it depends on the relationship and how connected you are and um, how tired you both are. But it's like sex also doesn't have to be penetrative sex or of any kind. It can be just, you know, or just having the intimacy as well mm. and remembering that intimacy and, and keeping that intimacy because you have got a newborn and like, Myself now, I have a toddler who sleeps on me every night, so that's a different kind of intimacy. It's not mm. the so it's not the same intimacy with my partner at this time in bed and that kind of context. But yeah, the quality doesn't. The quality will change. It mm. has changed for sure mm. from being a, a you know young single woman to now having a child and, and all the factors that come into that. Um, but yeah, when I say you know the quickie in the kitchen, that was that was a bit of a joke. But it does it does happen as well, you know. Yeah, it's I like we have to days. find those moments. And, yes. Um, and with my boy, he's never slept long, so mm. it is literally like we never know how long we've got. Mm. And so it is taking those opportunities um, if if the mood is right as well. Mm. So, how have you met any challenges that you may have had in your sexual? relationship with your partner um for me it's been a lot of inner work I've definitely been on a huge inner journey um with myself and with this through the pregnancy the birth and being a mother mm-hmm. and then as sort of challenges have risen um communicating that talking about it you know that's sort of the key factor really is communication Mm. um and i'll always know if things aren't right it's because we're not talking about it yeah um and you know it can be it can often be that even when it comes to sexuality even if so I've been mummying all day mm. and all working and I get to the end of the, the evening and I'm I'm tired. And the last thing on my mind that particular day would be to initiate any kind of intimacy or sexuality. But I can be ignited. So it's also been the kind of the, the realisation in that, in the relationship in that as well. So it doesn't mean that I'm not, I can't get into that space. Yeah. Um, so, and again, that's been down to communicating that and you know sometimes I need um I need time you know yeah and it's how we're approached yeah (laughs) you know sometimes that may not be readily available but doesn't mean it can't be available Mm. and so then how we approached by our partner Mm. is that what you're saying yeah no absolutely yeah yeah Yeah. And there's a, there's a certain sensitivity with it as well. Absolutely. You know, especially when we're holding babies all day long and we're giving you know, that person a breastfeed, so I'm mm. he still breastfeeds like a newborn some days, so I'm giving, giving, giving all day long. Mm. And I might be at the end of the day, I might be really like having that kind of energy to to seek something from my partner or something with my partner. Um, but I might not, and there's a certain sensitivity that comes into that, and and how he approaches me, and mm. and it being okay if I'm not 
um, wanting any kind of sexuality or if he's not wanting any kind of sexuality. Mm. And I think that's where a lot of couples struggle with children is there's kind of the expectations that we put on ourselves and, the, mm. um, you know, we should be having sex. Yes. And it's going to be the same as it was before. Yeah, exactly. Which and it's not ever going if, to be. No. <laughs> it's an impossibility. And if it's, so it won't, but then mm. we get disappointed that it's not. And then if it's not, then there's something wrong with us and there's yeah. something wrong with the relationship or this, she doesn't fancy me anymore or he doesn't fancy me anymore. And we get mm. into these kind of dynamics and dilemmas. Um, and it's, it's taking away all the conditioning and the, the wrongs and the rights and the shoulds and the shouldn'ts and, coming back to to intimacy and whatever that means with each other mm. and even if that's just sitting and holding hands or looking into each other's eyes giving each other a foot massage or having a bath together and and those things then lead on to sexuality but mm. they don't have to and that's mm. the important bit as well it's like a lot of women that I've spoken to have been like but if we have a bath together then we're gonna have to have sex yeah no it's not, you don't have to do anything mm. and you need to communicate that with each other as well and to not pressurize each other but it's letting go of the uh, agenda and bath or massage or touch or kissing or tenderness means yeah sex mm -hmm. mm. which i think is very much more important after childbirth no, we, we were, you were just talking about the six week thing. I mentioned the six thing, week thing. Mm. And, um, even though you're up to it before, <laughs> um, but I remember a whole fear thing around the six week thing. Right. And I expect many women feel like that because it is going to feel different and our yonis do look different. And, you know, is it going to hurt, especially if we've had a traumatic birth? Um, and also this still wanting to be close mm. and um, to please, I suppose, mm. and be with our partners. So, you know, sometimes there's a very different experience to what you've had. So I'm wondering what you would suggest for someone who, a woman who is in fear about having sex after childbirth for the first time. Mm. Um. Again, definitely listening to and honouring your own body mm -hmm. and feeling when's right for them, not when's right for their partner mm -hmm. and, and not putting that pressure on themselves. And, you know, your partner may be really desiring sex, really desiring you. But if that woman isn't ready, then if we push ourselves, then it's, it's not going to be honouring no. to ourselves or our partners, actually. Um and to just take it really slowly and really gently and, again, communicate, um, can we take this slowly? Like, I'm, I'm feeling really terrified about this and my yoni looks different or feels different and, you know, can we take this really slowly, slow things down and, you know, take it back to basics, start, mm. start at the basics mm. and not go full into to any kind of anything, really. Mm -hmm. um, talk to other women as well talk to other women about their experiences get support from other women um, and as I said before to not kind of succumb to that kind of pressure every woman is so different I know couples who still haven't aren't um, being sexually acted after a year mm -hmm. or two years even and they get to a point where it's you know is this because we're not ready or is this fear or you know and things need to be looked at mm. but it like one couple that's coming to mind it was it was nine months and she just needed that time just to to sort of reclaim her body and reclaim her sexuality before she could share it again yeah 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 absolutely so just doing what's right for for you for your body mm. <clears throat> I think um you know, this is an important thing for men to be hearing as well as women is this whole ideas of what happens after childbirth. So kind of, okay, it's six weeks, now we can have sex again. And, you know, for men to be educated 
Of course, there's been changes for them, but it's very different for a change for a woman. Mm. For men to be ed- educated on how to reapproach sex. Um, I remember a woman speaking out, asking a question at Brighton Talk Sex, actually about childbirth trauma, and that she'd had a traumatic childbirth, and therefore she had this whole resistance to being close at all. And I suppose if a man is constantly uh, approaching for sex, it was making her withdraw even even more. And it's that whole thing, if we've, we've got a scab, we don't want it <laughs> to be poked at all mm. the time. So, no. Just hearing you talk, I feel it's really important for men to be noticing how they can be supportive to actually then their women to be more receptive to the idea of that reconnection mm. um, and a change in a sexuality is going to be different sex between them is going to be different mm. but I don't think men you know women aren't having this information just as much as men aren't and I think you know for me personally it was that, it was that thing of wanting to please mm. to make sure that we were still in relationship that there was still that fire between us um, and sex between us but also that real uh, you know so sometimes as women I think we can step over our own boundaries yeah no absolutely yeah to yeah. make sure that the other yeah looking after them yeah is okay yeah. and all that would just cause is resentment I suppose yeah and again it comes back to that honouring and and if we're not honouring ourselves by overstepping that boundary and doing something that we're not ready for mm. or not wanting to do, then we're not honouring them either. So it's a complete no. dishonouring going up, going on. Mm. And then, as you say, there's going to be a resentment and it's just, it starts to get really icky and messy and yeah, it doesn't, doesn't need to be that way. And mm. respect, you know, for partners to respect I mean, we're just talking about men. There's obviously women Mm. who are with other women and and, um, for the partner to respect the the woman who's been through the birth, but also for the partners, for them to be supported as well because Mm. it's it's a big change for them as well. It's a different change, as you say, but they've also been through this change and they might also be a bit traumatised. I know my partner was there at the birth and it was pretty traumatising for him as well. Mm. So his world was all shaken up and... So how can we come back into union together after all that we've been through whilst we've also got this little baby who's needing our attention 24-7? Mm. And how can we do that in a really honouring, respectful and loving way? Mm. And, that's, and that's why I'm, yeah, the, the taking it really slowly. And so maybe today we can hold hands and then tomorrow we can do this and then next week we can caress each other's heads and just mm. how can we bring it back to that really uh, innocent intimacy and then see how we can move into to sexuality, knowing that it, it won't ever be yeah. as it was. But it, it might, you know, things will come back. I know with, with my mm. sexuality, my sex life, you know, lots of elements that were there previously have definitely come back in now, maybe not as often mm. because the time isn't available. But um, it doesn't mean that it's lost forever either Mm. so embracing the change embracing the new and um yeah just taking your time i think also listening to you um you know the body woman not feeling her body is her own so if men were approaching the woman you know to approach her breast straight away or her yoni straight away i mean even in a in a relationship without a baby I think it's more challenging when the, because the woman is mothering, she's mothering with her breasts and she's given birth with her yoni. So like you just said, um, to bring in different ways of touch that don't involve those two mm. parts of the body yet. You know, so often there are go straight go to place, aren't they? The breasts and the yoni. Whereas mm. like what you're saying is to bring other ways of touch and meeting each other before those parts which may be holding fear or actually I'm already giving so much from mm-hmm. here. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And our, and our partners, are, like, they know when we don't, <laughs> we're not really into it. 
Don't they? they you know, I can, so many men have said, well, you know, I knew she didn't really want me or I could feel she didn't really want me or energetically she wasn't there with me. So, again, it's just like crossing that thing you just said about um, not not giving because we feel we have to mm. because actually we do that, but our partners know that anyway, so it's not healthy for I think I think a more conscious man or woman knows that. Mm, yeah, some even men I've met that just like I could feel that she didn't really want me. Right, right. Um, there's a yeah. I, I don't know whether we need to be conscious, but mm. I think there's that feeling of when we're not really being desired or wanted or allowed in to yeah. another. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that knowing is there and it's just what to do with that. And, yeah, it doesn't feel very good when we know somebody doesn't want to be mm. doing something with us, even if it's just having a cup of tea. They didn't really yeah. want to be there. It's not, it's not a very nice feeling. No, So exactly. if somebody's being intimate with us just to please us, if we really look at it, that's, yeah, it's not, it's not a loving thing to do mm. for ourselves. Um yeah, and of course there are women who've had C-sections as well, mm. and that that's a whole different. I mean, I, that wasn't what it was like for me, but that's a whole different layer and a whole different healing that has to go on. And mm. yeah, so I think the six-week thing is just it's more listening to your own body, like you did, you know, two weeks. But like you said, the other woman took nine months. Mm. You know, uh, the body's gone through so much change. Mm. Yeah. So um, tips that we've kind of collected as we've been talking. Um, so your tips for someone who is just re-entering that sexuality for themselves mm -hmm. and then sexuality with another, what would you suggest? Um, Let's begin with sex for self. <laughs> begin with what, sorry? Sex for self. Sex for self. Um what do you mean by that, sorry? Well, rediscovering your own sexuality. Right, right. Um, getting to know your body again. Mm -hmm. So taking the time to know your body. Um, looking at your body. You know, um, so getting that mirror and looking at your yoni. And um, either relearning or learning to love your, your yoni as it is mm. um, and also full body uh, I remember just standing in front of a mirror and just looking at my body and I would sort of do that on a daily basis and, and getting to know this body that's been through this massive change this massive, massive transition um, and if there is if you can find moments having some time to to nurture your body and to be intimate with your body as well mm -hmm. caressing your own body bringing it back to self um if the feelings are there and the f and it feels right you know it's self-pleasuring can be mm -hmm. really amazing as a way to reconnect with that that mm -hmm. feeling inside um would you suggest um a kind of breast massage so that the breasts don't feel just for feeding some kind of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> self-caress, yeah. self-nourishment. that they're not just for milk, you know, yeah. just a, a milk machine. Mm. Um, and so, again, some women I know have not wanted any touch, even their own touch, for a while, and some women are more ready, but I think it's just taking that step and just, just playing with it, mm. you know, how does this feel? So it's just just me and my body, and how does this feel? How does it feel if I touch my breasts and I play with my nipples this way? And it's okay, remembering um, that enjoyment or bringing back that new enjoyment, I guess. Um, and it's yeah, it's rediscovering new ways of being with ourselves. And then sex with our partners. Mm. What, what would your tips be? So again, taking it slow, uh, slowing things right down honouring uh, ourselves and the other um, bringing it back to basics starting with the basics 
and focusing on the intimacy before the sexuality. I think even if a woman is feeling incredibly sexual and ready to go, I think it's still really important to go through that really honouring slow process, actually, because we've been through something huge. Yeah. Um, so to take that time and to acknowledge that, that transition as well feels really important. Um, and just rediscovering that intimacy with each other, however that looks, and then taking it from there. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. You have been listening to Brighton Talk Sex. Audio hosted by Michelle Roberton. For more information, please visit brightontalksex.com.